Hello, my name is Ciboulette and this is a tutorial about UV map. This video will explain what is a UV map and how to unwrap any item very easily. I will also give you all my tips to master an efficient unwrapping technique. So what is a UV map? A UV map is a 2D projection of a 3D object. You have to imagine that in order for our computers to apply a 2D flat image on a three-dimensional object, you will need to cut seams in the model in order to flatten it. Kind of like origami or like a sewing pattern, for example. In Blender, after modeling my viewing, I will have to assign which edge is going to be a seam line and then unwrap my model, meaning the software will unfold it into my 2D space. It is a very important part, if not the most important part in the creation process of your item. If this step is not done correctly, you might have some shadow or lighting or even texturing issue later on. So how to unwrap a simple model? For the sake of this video, I am going to unwrap those pants that I made for the Margot set a few months ago. This item is actually quite simple to unwrap and is perfect because it has some round shapes but also square shapes. And I will show you where I put my seams in order to render it perfectly. So I go in edit mode hitting tab. We are first going to unwrap this square part here. Because I use a bevel, I can select this edge loop. So to select an edge loop, hit Alt and right click and it will select all around the edge loop. Then I click on Max Seam and if I remove the sharp overlay, I will see that the Max Seams are in red. So every red line will be a seam. Then I will do the same for the back, hitting Alt, right click, so I can select the edge loop and hit Max Seam. Then I will separate each side and because I want my islands to be as small as possible so they don't take too much space in my UV, I will click on this one. Then hitting shift, I will click on the top one as well. So those sidings will be cut in four. So the right part, the left part, the top part and the bottom part. And I click on mark scenes. Then, by selecting the volume hitting L several times, so I'm sure I have all the volume selected, I will hit unwrap, unwrap. And now you can see that my item is all unwrapped. You have two methods to unwrap something that you designed manually. There is the angle based and there is a conformal. For a square shape like this, I recommend putting conformal because it will put straight line on your islands. I can deselect my selection by hitting A and we will take care of this cylinder part. So as I showed in previous tutorial, the face hidden here is never seen. I actually removed it, so there is no face behind the square. So the easiest way to unwrap a cylinder is by selecting an edge loop that will be hidden, like in the inside here, for example, and hitting max seams. Then I select my cylinder and by hitting E, it will unwrap it. Here, you can see the difference between conformal and angle based. I usually always try both and select the one that I like most. So depending on how you want to apply your texture or depending on how you want the texture to show, one method will be better than the other. Always remember that the bigger the island is, the sharper the texture will be. So because this one looks way much larger than the previous one, that the conformal one, I will use the angle based. Now about the hooks. So if I wanted to save some space on my UV map, I would unwrap only one and then duplicate it so all my hooks share the same UV. I'm gonna have to remove all the previous one. So I'm keeping just one. Because it's a cylinder, we will apply the same technique we used for this tube. So I'm gonna hit Alt and right click to select an edge loop. And it will select all the way from point to point and you can mark seam. So if I select this object and hit E, I can see if I'm happy with the shape. And I think that's a good shape because it's straight. Just in case, I'm going to look how the conformal look. And you can see that the ending is very crushed 
so that won't be the best method. So I'm gonna stay on angle paste. But before duplicating all the other hooks, I will need to unwrap all the other items. So I'm sure everyone takes his place in the UV map. So I will duplicate at the end. I could do the same with the pan that I did with the hook. Like I could keep the big one and remove the two other ones, then unwrap the big one and once the texture is done, I can duplicate it again. Because if you watch the difference, this part is just smaller and this part is just shorter. But because I want the pants to reflect on each other and I want the shadows of this one affecting this one and this one, I will keep all three separately. So let's focus on the big one first. When you put your seams, you don't want to sharp some smooth edges. So I will avoid, for example, putting a seams line here because this is supposed to be smooth. So the best way to do it is to actually put it on a sharp line like this one, for example. So I will mark seam and then I will hit L to check how it looks. And for me, it looks perfect because I keep the round shape. Now the screw will be the same. They have no back face. And wrapping exactly all they are, those six screws can be all unwrapped separately. And finally, I will again use the Alt right click to select an edge loop. So for example, if I click on this edge loop, it will select all around until here, but it won't go further. So another shortcut I'm using is the control right click, where it will select an edge choosing the shorter path. So for example, if I click on this one with the shift and then you can see that it's white, meaning this is the selected edge right now. And then you can click directly where you want to go and he will choose the shorter path and usually the path that you want. It will make you gain some time. Then I want to separate the hole as well. So I can either click on HALT and SHIFT so I can keep the first selection. So HALT, SHIFT, right click and then I can select the edge loop. Now I want to do the same for the back, so I'm going to HALT, SHIFT, right click to select the edge loop. And then same on the back here, SHIFT click and then CONTROL click until the end. And same with the hole. Now I can click MAXIM and continue. So this part here, for example, if I try to unwrap it, it will be a weird ring. But I want to keep it straight because it will take less place in my UV map if it's a line. So I will just add a seam. Preferably, I always hit them. So I will hit this one, for example, mark seam. Same with the side. I'm going to put, for example, something in the back and because I don't want it to be that long because it will take too much space I will probably hit it one as well on the top one. And now that I have spent time unwrapping this pan I can duplicate it so I don't have to redo this process again. If I was doing this for the first time I wouldn't even create them before. I would just wait to unwrap everything I want to unwrap and then I would duplicate it. So. For the example, I will remove the smaller one and then I will select all my pan and duplicate it by hitting Shift D and X if I want to move it on the X axis. Now we are ready to unwrap everything completely. So I will hit A to select everything and then I will hit E to unwrap everything. Here we can observe a few things. First, there is this part, which is probably the siding of the handle. That takes a lot of space. It's a waste of space in the UV map and the UV map space is precious. Secondly, I use the angle base method for all of them, but I want certain parts to be unwrapped with the conformal method. For example, my cylinder and the hook that we talked about before. So I will select the choose two and hit E and conformal. Now, if I want to see everything without selecting everything, I need to click on this little piece here 
which is Keep UV and Edit Mode Mesh selection in sync. By having this option active, I will see the UV map without having to select everything, but I will also be able to select something on the UV map and it will show on my viewport. So for example, if my model is complicated and I click somewhere and I don't see what is selected, I can hit dot and it will zoom in so I can see which part in the UV map is which part in my 3D viewport. So now we are going to solve this part. So first I thought I'd put a seam like here, but apparently I did it. So I select everything and hit E and now it's better, but it's still curved. So how can I do to make it straight? There is two ways to make it straight. The easy way is to download a plugin named UV Square that will do it for you automatically. I will put the link in the video description. By hitting N, you can click on Snap to Axis, but this will work only if you have this option untoggled. So don't forget to untoggle this or you will have an error message. So I just untoggle it, select the part I want to straighten and hit Snap and it will automatically put it straight. Now, if you want to learn how to do it manually, then you can use the follow active quad. To do that, you will need to align at least one square in the Y axis. With the vertex selection on, I will click on this one and this one and hit S, X, 0. And it will put them on the same line. Then I will do the same on the two next to it, S, X, 0. And then I will repeat with the two of top as Y0 because I want it to be on the same Y axis of my UV map and same with the bottom one, S, Y, 0. Now this square is perfectly aligned. So if I choose this space and then I click on L to select all the parts, you can see that the first face I selected is in gray because this is the active selection. So now I can do unwrap follow active quad and it will straighten my island. So now I select all the siding that I want to straighten and then I select everything on my UV map and use the shortcut. But as I said before, the bigger the island is, the more precise the texture will be. But when we unwrap with Blender, the software will keep the proportion. So the bigger item will obviously take more space on the UV map but sometimes you have smaller items where you want to keep more detail. For example, the screw will be very small, so I can select them and then make them bigger. And once everything is set, you can either reorganize by hand or you can use Ctrl P. Ctrl P will automatically reorganize all your UV islands in your UV map. Or you can untoggle the rotate because sometimes you need the island to be in a certain direction. The reason why everything is so small is because this one is vertical. So if I just put it horizontal and then select everything and hit Ctrl P, it will make everything bigger. The last important detail is the margin. The margin will be the space between islands when you unwrap. It is very important to have at least 0.005 because if you don't put any margin, you can have some issue in-game with the texture, with black line or shadow issue. If you have space on your UV map, you can see at which point it will drastically make the island smaller. So I recommend to put as margin as possible because it will be easier if you need to select one part in Photoshop when you will be editing your texture. Now that everything is unwrapped and we won't touch the UV map again, now I can duplicate my hook. So I select my hook, hit Shift D and X to move it on the X axis and do it again. I think I remember I put two empty ones here and another one for the big one. If I select all the hooks, you can see that we all be sharing the same UV map. There is no rule when it comes to unwrapping item. For the same item, there can be an infinite possibility to unwrap it. The more you will practice, the more you will understand where it's better to put your sims and have a better UV space. But there are also some items that will be more difficult to unwrap than other. And that will be for example for organic item or any volume that is not geometric. For example, I am going to unwrap the monkey you have by default in Blender. This monkey is kind of the mascot of Blender. If I go in edit mode, 
I can see that this is very organic so I have no idea where to put my seams because obviously if I smooth it there is no straight line. If I unwrap it without putting any seam I can see that I will have some overlapping part which is very bad like for example this, this is overlapping and also you can see that every polygon here is approximately the same size where in the UV map it is not. So in order to have a clean texture, I will need to have a clean UV map. So first I can start by separating the ears. I will follow the ears here and by hitting Ctrl right click, I can select my path. And then hit Mark Seam and then I can do the same on the opposite. Then we can imagine that the face of the monkey is probably different texture from the school. The face will have kind of a leather texture, while the school will have some hair. So I can probably split it here too. So let's try again and see how it goes. So if I select everything and hit unwrap, now I can see that it's much better. The face is nice and now the polygons are approximately the same size and same with the score where we don't have any overlapping polygon anymore. If I select those two I can see it's the eyes so that's fine. Now the only remaining issue would be for the ears because you can see that this part is very small compared to this part. So what we can do is cut them in two. So I will try selecting an edge loop by hitting Alt right click and same on the other side and mark seam. And then when I select everything, it looks much better because you can see here we have the inside and here we have the outside. So I use some margin and now I have a proper unwrap of my monkey. Now I am going to give you 10 tips I use when unwrapping an object. First is putting seam where there are already some existing seam in real life. For example, in this sofa, I have put the seaming line where the actual sewing line would be in real life, between the two fabrics. It makes complete sense that in real life, when you work with fabric, you will have a visible sewing line in your object. My second advice is to avoid at all costs angons. Angons are polygons that are not quad or trees. They are polygons that will have five or more vertex. For example, for this door, I have reduced the polygons to have angles. If I unwrap it, I can see that the result doesn't make sense anymore. So you want to keep quad as much as possible. If you don't have a choice though, there is one way to solve it that won't work all the time, but that works most time, is to select the part you want to unwrap, go in the front view by hitting one, and use the unwrap project from view. It will project the UV map exactly how it's seen on your viewport. 3. Use the orientation of your island to optimize how you will apply your texture later. For example, if you have a wood item, I recommend to put all your island in the same direction because later on, when you will be applying your wood texture, the fiber will already be in the right direction. 4. You can use Ctrl P to reorganize automatically your UV space, but in case you have some organic island, it might be better to do it by hand. If I hit Ctrl P, you can see that I lose a lot of empty space and that my islands are much smaller. 5. You can make islands bigger than others if this island contains information that you want more precise. For example, if you have an item with writing, you want this part to be bigger. In this fridge toy in my Petit Chef set, the drawing was supposed to be much smaller proportionally to other islands, but I made them much bigger so the drawing inside won't be too blurry in-game. 6. Think about lower load. When you make an item for the sims, you will have to make high load, medium load and low load. And this is important because if you placed a seam line on an edge loop you're supposed to remove while reducing the poly count, when deleting it, it will completely mess up your UV map. So you need to plan ahead if you want to keep some freedom. 7. By default, the game uses 1024 resolution texture. Of course, you can use higher and then edit manually the setting of your game if you want the game to read it correctly. But if you want people to use your item right away without having to edit the settings, one solution is to do several textures. My wall desk from my Diane set has two textures. 
One is for the desk and the other one is for the clutter inside. In that way, I can keep very precise detail while having texture doing only 1024 resolution. 8. Think about discontinuation. If you have a low poly item that use very few polygon and then you use the smooth shading to make it look round. If you apply a seam line on this smooth area, it will probably look more sharp in game. So the first reflex would be to not put seam at all, but obviously we have to put at least one. But if you place only one, then sometimes the result won't be as good as having more than one. For example, in this UV map, we will lose a lot of information on the top and bottom of this ball. So the best is to keep two lines and to find the right balance between details and the appearance of your object. 9. To make sure you have unwrapped every part of your object, check the bottom left corner of your UV space. When you have unwrapped all your model and there is a remaining black point here, it means one of the parts is not unwrapped. With this option toggle, you can hit C to select it and then it will appear on your viewport. So you just need to unwrap it and it will appear in your UV space. And 10. The size of your texture will matter when it comes to how a computer will run your content. So when possible, if you can reduce the size of it, do it. When you have very simple object that doesn't take all the UV space, then you can resize it to optimize the UV space. For example, for this rack, I can hit SY4 to multiply its size on Y four times. And after baking the texture, I can reduce the size in Photoshop to reduce its proportion. This is the end of this tutorial. I hope you understood everything and that it helped you understand better how the unwrapping process works and why it is so important for your creation. If you have any question, you can ask in the comments or you can join my Discord server where I have a special channel to help young creators. If you like this video, please subscribe as it really helps me grow and make more of those.